Michael Altman, the founder of the Church of Unitology, the central antagonist in the Dead Space series, was said to be a prophet. 200 years before the events of Dead Space, Altman made his rounds on the media circuit, detailing information about a scientific discovery that he dubbed the Marker, and even showed video evidence of its existence. While most took this for an elaborate, albeit interesting, hoax, some truly considered his words. An alien artifact found deep underground, predating the existence of human beings, and a government conspiracy to cover it up. It was then the seed was planted that something greater was afoot, and the subsequent assassination of the man who brought them these great truths at the hands of the government laid the groundwork for something deeper than a simple conspiracy. It was here that a religion found its footing, and Michael Altman was dubbed its prophet. This is the official story the church has shared with the world, but the truth of this insidious organization's origins is much more disturbing. Michael Altman may have been a prophet, but he was a reluctant one. Altman could be considered responsible for the start of the Church of Unitology, but he was never its leader, and he certainly never believed in the promise of the Marker. This was a man in the wrong place at the wrong time. Much like Isaac Clark, Altman was a regular person, thrust headfirst into a world of insanity, used by others to fulfill their goals. In this video, we're going to take a look at the true story of Michael Altman, the story of a man of science that the Church of Unitology buried and replaced with the serene image of a man of faith. You can read this story yourself in the pages of Dead Space Martyr, but for this video we'll be sticking strictly to the story of Altman, so if you want the greater context of everything we're discussing, let us know in the comments. Michael Altman was a geophysicist who followed his anthropologist girlfriend Ada to Chicxulub, so she could research the stories of the indigenous people. While there, he took a mundane job studying the Chicxulub crater, the believed impact point where an asteroid had hit the Earth, possibly the same asteroid that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. While working his desk job, he discovered a gravitational anomaly, a weak signal coming from deep within the crater. While the people around him decided to simply run it up the ladder and forget about it, Altman was convinced this was a mystery that needed to be solved, and began calling around to anyone who would listen. It was then he was contacted by Charles Hammond, a former technician for Dredger Corp, a company known for shady dealings. Hammond informed Altman that Dredger Corp also had their eyes on the crater, and whatever was going on, it didn't sit well. Too many people were keeping silent, and he suspected foul play. Altman walked away from this meeting more determined than ever to discover the truth. During this time, Altman began suffering from constant headaches and regular nightmares. A short while after this meeting with Hammond, Altman was continuing his research into the crater when he was made aware of a video broadcast from one of the other researchers he found who took interest in the strange anomalies within the crater. The video was mostly static, but at points he could see a man covered in deep cuts, making strange symbols all around his body. Altman decided to reach out to as many of his contacts as he could to piece together this video, and after gathering enough of the transmission to create a somewhat complete version, he and his group decided to leak it to the internet, in an attempt to force Stredger Corp's hand and discover the truth. Also around this time, Ada informed Altman that the stories of the Chicxulub people were changing, and a young boy she was working with led them to a beach where they encountered an odd fleshy mass and learned the native story of the Devil's Tale, a manipulative force said to live within the crater that the native people knew to provide visions. They were also approached by the town drunk, who could somehow tell that Altman had some tie to their people. As it turned out, his mother was originally a native to Chicxulub, a tie to this place that Altman was not previously aware of. After this, Altman and his fellow scientists were approached by Craig Markov, the man in charge of the operation they had been trying to uncover. Each was given a choice, join Markov's team of researchers or die. Altman chose to join the team with Markov bringing Ada along as insurance. They were taken to a massive underwater facility where Altman continued his research on the signal being transmitted from within the crater and was eventually recruited to dive deep into the ocean to take further readings. 
During his first deep dive into the crater, Almond's pilot seemingly went insane, telling him he was speaking with a dead loved one, and that they needed to leave the artifact alone. He attacked Altman, who had just barely managed to fight back and get him hogtied so they could return to the research facility. After this, Altman was given more information. Apparently, everyone who approached this anomaly, this giant black structure, started to have visions and lose their minds. Altman was the first not to be driven crazy by visions. He showed some kind of resistance to the effects of the artifact, and that made him a valuable asset in its excavation. The only visions Altman suffered from were those of his girlfriend Ada's mother, who told him the artifact's true name, the Black Marker. Altman played along with Markov in order to conduct his own research, but the longer they spent near the marker, the more the researchers and guards within the facility started to suffer from stronger and stronger headaches and be visited by those long dead. While some saw these visions as a warning, others recognized them as a religious experience, starting to revere the marker as some kind of alien deity. These people found their prophet in Michael Altman, a man who was able to stand in the presence of the marker without succumbing to madness. When Altman fought against this role and told them they were crazy for treating this as some kind of religious figure, they dubbed him a reluctant prophet, who would someday come around to their way of thinking. After all, they believed he was being gifted with a direct line of communication to the marker itself. During his dives to the marker, Altman recovered both a piece of the artifact itself and a sample of what seemed to be living tissue. He couldn't stop Markov from obtaining the marker, and after it was brought to the base, he was restricted from any kind of contact with it. His research hit a standstill, and Altman began to plan his escape. He and Ada were successful in their escape from the facility, and Altman decided to blow the whistle on the entire operation. He went on talk shows and news networks, telling everyone about the black marker and the cover-up currently being conducted by the government. He explicitly left out details like the people being driven to madness and suicide, along with the visions that were being experienced by everyone near the marker. In Altman's mind, these details made the story less believable, and he needed the world to take this warning against messing with the marker seriously. Not long after their escape, Altman was recaptured by Markov and given the option of either continuing his research or allowing Markov's men to kill Ada. Reluctantly, Altman agreed to return to the facility and it was then that the horror truly unfolded. Another researcher had obtained the tissue sample retrieved by Altman during his dive, and distracted by a vision of his grandmother, injected it directly into his bloodstream. This led to the very first outbreak of necromorphs. The facility devolved into chaos, as no one knew how to handle the situation. During the attack, Altman and his small group of survivors discovered that the only way to kill the monsters was through dismemberment and fire. They attempted to escape, but only Altman made it out alive. This could have been the end of his story. He could have walked away and lived his life ducking Dredger Corp. But instead, he decided he understood what the Marker wanted. And if he could just appease it, the insanity would stop. So Altman made his way back to the facility. Surviving multiple encounters with necromorphs, he made his way down to the location of the marker, where he found one survivor, Harmon, a man who previously helped him get close to the marker, who is now a full-blown believer. With Harmon's help, Altman was able to reach the innermost chamber housing the marker, and after touching it, he fully understood what the artifact wanted from him. Altman furiously typed out blueprints to the construction of a new marker, and after doing so, the signal the black marker was transmitting suddenly stopped. He had placated it, and now it was time to make their escape. In order to keep the marker out of Markov's hands, Altman initiated a self-destruct of the facility that would send the black marker back to the bottom of the ocean. Harmon protested, but Altman convinced him that this was what the marker wanted, as they frantically made their way to the surface. After finally making it above water and getting back to his boat, Altman and Harmon were free and clear of the horrors of the underwater facility. Unfortunately for Altman, Harmon was too far gone. He beat Altman over the head, accusing him of lying about what the marker wanted. As he lost consciousness, all he could think of was how he had saved the man who would be responsible for ending his life. 
As it would turn out, Altman would not die in that boat. He was resuscitated by Markov and thrown in a padded cell for months. He spent all of this time plagued by visions given to him by the Marker. After being dragged out to meet with Markov, Altman could barely tell if what he was experiencing was real or just another vision, but he decided to treat it as if it were really happening. Markov then explained to Altman what he had known all along. Ada was indeed dead at their hands. He told Altman that all of this time locked up he wanted him dead, but that he deserved so much worse for interfering with his plans to use the marker for his own gain. Markov had recovered Altman's blueprints for a new marker and put them to good use. They were experimenting, creating their own necromorphs, but just throwing Altman to their new beast was not enough. Markov wanted Altman's death to be special. He explained that not only did he fail, not only would the marker signal spread, but Altman was now to be the figurehead of its religion. Altman's appearances on TV were just vague enough to set him up as the perfect religious leader, the perfect martyr for their new religion, Unitology. Altman was told all of this, given a spoon, and dropped into an arena with their latest necromorph monster. Michael Altman would die knowing that his legacy would be as a prophet to a religion based around his greatest failing. This is the true story of Michael Altman. He was not a prophet. He did not found Unitology. He was just a researcher in over his head who tried his best to stop the insidious intentions of those higher on the totem pole than himself. One man failed to stand against corporate interest and government operations, and because of his failure, 200 years later, Isaac Clarke would face off against a horde of necromorphs aboard the USG Ishimura. Of course, Altman never really stood a chance of stopping the events that had been set in motion. It's even possible he really was a prophet, as Dead Space Martyr actually starts with a dream. A dream where Altman, armed with nothing but a small knife, is torn in half by a monster, suspiciously like the one he was forced to fight in his final moments of life. This is the tragic true story of the prophet of Unitology, Michael Altman. <laughs>